I want to talk about yeah I want to talk about this uh, one movie that I have watched I think a lot of people might also know about it it's a it's an American film and the name of the film is The Man from Earth now uh, the film is a very low budget film you know if you, if you look at the picture if you look at the way it has been made you will realize that there's not been much invent invested because it was a very independent project you know the the person who was involved the writer was uh, you know uh, it was it was is a story by Jerome Bixby you know he's a writer who had worked and I think he worked on Star Trek and things like that and uh, I think Richard Linklater or something like that I mean I forgot the the the, the director's name uh, so what happened is that let me let me check let me check the director's name if I can because it's one of my favorite films and I don't want to get it wrong <laughs> you know I don't want to get the get the director's name uh, wrong so let's see the man from earth okay so the, yeah richard Finkman. sorry i got the i got the surname wrong so uh, it was written by it was a story by uh, jerome bixby and the it was it was it was directed by Richard Schenkman. Uh, Jerome Bixby, unfortunately, he passed away. I think he even passed away way before this film was even made. But it's a very interesting story. It's a beautiful story. I mean, I, <laughs> I feel like, you know, maybe I can keep on speaking about it forever. You know, that's how I feel like, you know, when I, when I talk about this film. I mean, many people may not like it. That's, again, I mean, art is definitely, I guess, subjective. But... Uh, what works for me is the film is that a lot of things that you know resonates with you as a, as a, as a human being. You know, it, it speaks to you as a uh, your about your human condition, yeah. and and that makes it all the more so beautiful. Uh, well, the premise is something like this: there is this one uh, college professor. He is a uh, he he's you know he it's been I mean he has he had been working for ten years in one particular college or university something like that and now he's just planning to leave and as he plans to leave his colleagues came to know that he, he's leaving the job and he's leaving the town and leaving and just moving on it's in the u.s it's set in the u.s so that what they do is that the people come to visit him they come to talk to him they come to you know sh uh, you know bid him goodbye and also they're very curious to know you know what is probably going on with him like you know why uh, does he want to go all of a sudden why does he want to leave everything behind and just move on you know because because you know being a professor being all these all these professions are very uh, prestigious and people get them mostly you know I mean in reality people get them with through a lot of hard work and everything so for the people it was a big curiosity as to why this guy after having all these things and the one person also says in uh, that you know he was he's in line to be chairing the department something like that and chairing the department is i think a big deal um, you know it's like it being the head of the department something like that i guess so uh, what happened was that you know but in spite of everything he just wants to go he just wants to leave he says that you know that's just how it works and he he says that he has done it before as well but uh, according to the story the guy is about 35 to 40 years old and that's how he looks so people, the people were pretty surprised to say that you. Were, they say that oh, you're too young to do this, to have done this before, because for about almost ten years they had he had been working with them, and then you know how, what, when did he even do such a thing? When did he even, you know, bring about such a change in his life? So that becomes a very uh, curious thing for the people around him. And as 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 time passes by, as the evening passes by, you know. Uh, they start getting, you know, more people come in and then they start to gather and everything. And, uh, you know, he, he talks about, he says that he actually is a caveman who just has been alive for way too long, right, about something. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't remember exactly uh, how many years they said, but Cro-Magnon basically, and I'm not sure. Okay, let me let me check when, uh, when the Cro-Magnons you know, began. I mean, the like Cro-Magnons are... Uh, anatomically us like anatomically modern humans so uh, let's see how long ago was that early european modern humans okay 
they are the Cro-Magnons. Okay, so Cro-Magnons are also known as early European modern humans. So that's a very interesting way of putting it. Okay, and uh, it said that continues to occupy the continent possibly for as early as okay. So about roughly maybe forty thousand, sixty thousand years ago, thirty-five thousand years ago. So that's the kind of period that we are talking about. And this person, uh, his name in the movie is the character's name is John Oldman. I forgot the actor's name. He has done a good job. I feel I, I do like the acting. Uh, he hasn't been in very big productions, but he has been in some significant productions at the same time. Uh, the actor's name is, um, let me check, David Lee Smith. Okay, so that's the actor's name, uh, David Lee Smith. And he is the, he played the lead character. There's also a very good, well, who have done really good acting. You know, there's a beautiful uh, supporting cast as well. And everything, the most, th and then he talks about, you know, he says that he's actually a Cro-Magnon, and he says that, you know, how he has lived through all these years, somehow surviving, somehow not dying, you know, maybe he has this um, strong immune system or things like that, and how he says that, you know, he is, he has, uh, you know, he has been, uh, from time to time, he has also been engaged with uh, a lot of historical events and historical uh, characters as well. He says that he had actually met the Buddha. And he also says that, you know, he, the fact, in fact, that, you know, the, the whole Jesus myth was actually him, uh, you know, give it, receiving the, the the traction and, you know, like he, it was him who he had learned some, some tricks and some things from Buddha and then he went and preached it in the Middle East and the whole Jesus myth or the Jesus phenomenon was him, in fact. So, you know, so it's a very brilliantly made film. Uh, I don't want to say too much about the film. Uh, I actually want to say a lot about the film, but I just don't know how to really, you know, uh, allow it because, like, when I'm when I'm when I'm speaking, my mind is like, you know, oh, you, got, you know, I need to say this as well, I need to say that as well. But it's a, I really appreciate the film. I really appreciate the way the film has been made, uh, from a very anthropological perspective. It point it presents. I mean, a lot of things. A lot of people have pointed out that you know there are some factual inaccuracies, uh, in the movie, but. Uh, Despite all of that, I think there are certain a lot of things which, from a very academic and from a very analytical point of view, they're actually pretty interesting and pretty true and pretty poignant. You know, like for example, there's one thing that he says. You know, so one of one of them, one of the people in in the room, they ask him that you know if he has lived so long, then you know why doesn't he know? Uh, why why isn't this information you know widened or broadened or you know why isn't like let's say. Why isn't he like the richest person in the world or something like that, you know, or why doesn't he have all the power? Then he says that, you know, the only thing, the only special power, the, the only special ability he has is that he just doesn't die or he hasn't died yet. Uh, he just is just living for too long. That's the only thing. Uh, that's the only truth about him. And other than that, you know, he everything else about him is just uh, just normal. You know, he doesn't have any other superpower or anything. And uh, what he says is that, you know, he learns as the world develops. And even he says that, you know, when he, sa he says that he is a Cro-Magnon, and they ask him how to know him, know it, because he says that, you know, it is only after when, uh, you know, it is only after people, uh, you know, people, people conjecture it, or people sort of, uh, you know, people give it a definition, it is only then that he found a name for it, you know, to, to, he found a way to describe it. And that's pretty true, actually, because, see, like, for example, I, I, I say that I am a homo sapien. The question is, is, how do I know I'm a homo sapien? Because I fit the description of what is considered to be a homo sapien, right? That's the whole point. Or, for example, I, I can say that I live in the state of Assam. Now, how do I know that I live in the state of Assam? Or... You know, like, I, there's this whole map of Assam, and there's this whole geographical location of Assam. So, or, or let's say there's a geographical location of my hometown or my place. But how do I know that, uh, or let's say sometimes when I'm when I'm checking Google Maps, I what I try to do is that, you know, I try to check my home, you know. So, and I'm able to figure out, I'm able to find out my home or let's say my friend's home or uh, some other place, you know, I've been to, which are not, uh, not monuments or which are not distinct places. Still, I can, you know, just search the, the road and everything and I can figure out, ah, this has to be my house. The reason why I'm able to do that is because of the reference points that exist otherwise. 
you know, that ex exists other beyond that one thing that I'm trying to look for in the map, all the other reference points that are there are actually what is helping me to figure out what uh, this is all about. So that is the beauty of the film. I mean, the, what the film says is that, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, even if, because what happens is that rules change, you know, we have new findings. Let's say, for example, you know, recently, I mean, in recent times, you know, the one of the more uh, critical topics have been the, with the, with, with the, with the object with the idea of, of the Pluto, you know, that whether Pluto is a planet or whether it is not a planet, you know, and of course, I mean, now it has been absolutely, uh, you know, it has been removed from the tally of uh, Pluto. And I think the arguments do stand that, you know, that, uh, you know, because a lot of its behavior is not necessarily that of uh, planets, you know, just because it, it rotates doesn't mean that, you know, so, well, whatever i mean this is that's for science maybe you know maybe i'll have to dig deeper into that to get a very absolute answer per se but what i can say is that you know so what i'm basically trying to say is that you know these are very interesting things that the film has you know that uh, you know i mean you know so those kind of things and another thing he says that you know uh, then you know one of the one of the people asks him that you know why did not you go back to your house or where do you, where did you live where is your house and then he says that you know, uh, you know where were you, uh, you know like, you know, he asks that one girl who asked this question, he asks her that you know, uh, how do you figure out or where where do, you, where were you you know some, you know when you were a child or something like that, and he says that you know or let's say we might have certain landmarks and everything, uh, you know he says basically he says this thing, that you know. Even if uh, there was, you know, there was a, a certain place called home, but let's say if all the reference points are removed, right, of a location, let's say, for example, everything gets built and everything gets created and everything gets constructed and everything. And while, because this was a man, you know, who was a crow magnet and he had been traveling all throughout history. So what had happened was that as he had been traveling throughout history, uh, you know, he had been traveling to different places, he had been traveling to different locations, he had been different... So what happened was that, you know, I mean, he has, he, he can maybe figure, have some idea that, oh, maybe he was born in Europe or somewhere like that, but he can never go back to his exact home because there is no place called home, there's no reference for home. Let's say, for example, I mean, even, uh, let's say, for example, I mean, if it is like, the, I'm, I'm here right now in this point, in this location, yeah, now we have this uh, benefit that, you know, we can mark it on, on you know, we can we can actually figure out our coordinates. So that's a good thing. So even without the, uh, if, if the planet is there, we can at least figure out that, oh, these are the coordinates that I was in, you know. But, you know, but, but if you don't have those things, if you don't have any of those reference points, you know, it would be absolutely difficult to figure out, you know, where you were. So these are very beautiful points that it pointed out. And then another person had uh, asked uh, him that you know do you have any souvenirs or anything you know then he, he points to, he, he just lifts a lifts a, lifts, a, lifts a pen and he asks him that you know you know would will this pen be with you for let's say maybe a few years let alone i mean thousands of thousands of years because what happens is that i mean it, it, it points out a very important thing that you know significance you know how something is important or insignificant or insignificant is you know it, it all gets determined retroact retroactively, you know when when it is happening or at that given moment, you don't necessarily uh, think of it as important or unimportant or any of that stuff. You know only when it is gone, only you know, look back and you see oh it's important, and you keep it, you try to preserve it, you know that kind of thing. I mean if mostly what happens is that in the world, uh, people try to preserve. Uh, houses or clothes that were that belonged to uh, famous people, people who did some things, you know, people who were engaged in a lot of different activities. People try to preserve them. Now, the re because it belonged to them, you know, they, they, that is why that house acquired the value. You know, else, it wouldn't have been so important. As else, it would have been so precious. So, what I'm what I'm basically trying to say is that the Crow Magnon people weren't necessarily looking at themselves as special. It, I mean, it is only for us, after all these years, that it was something special, and that is what also comes to uh, that's, that's that's also the point with uh, with him, with with the character of John Oldman, that you know he may have been 
a Cro Magnon, he may have been, but he never thought that he just kept moving on, you know, and and he was moving on so many places that it was you know almost barely uh, impossible that he will keep something as a token as a monument of his uh, you know belongingness or of his beginnings. You know, when he when the sense of when the idea of a beginning was only something he realized very later on. You know, so these are very interesting topics that have been presented, and it's a beautiful film, I would say. And the most important, even technically, also, I mean, the entire film is shot in just inside this house, in this one room most of the time. And uh, despite of all these things, in spite of the limited canvas and the limited, you know, places that they're showing in the film. The film still is a huge success, and uh, I don't. I know that the film didn't earn that much, uh, financially maybe, but uh, you know through file sharing and everything to piracy, you know, it became a big hit. And I also remember. I uh, I don't know how long I've had the film with me, but I've watched it multiple times over the years. I don't. I'm not exactly sure in what on in what year that I watched the film, but I think two. There are two. I mean, the film. Although the film is made in just one house, it kind of makes me feel like traveling. You know, I, I almost. I mean, I feel like I wish I have had the time and the immunity of, uh, of John Oldman, so that I can just travel the whole world, see the world how it is, and everything. Of course, maybe through videos and everything, maybe I do know how the world is, but I think there is something more visceral and something more interesting. Uh, when you travel to places on your own, rather than you know just uh, perceive them through whatever you're seeing or what everything, all that. So yeah, I mean, there are a lot of things about the film. Maybe I'll, I'll make another video about the film because I can just keep talking about the film. I have, I mean, of course, I, I there might have there might be mistakes in the film, there might be some errors in the film, but I just like it. You know, it, it just because I like the I like the film because it allows me to think, it gives me an opportunity to think. That's what I like about the film.